So at this URL, you can find a description by Google researchers of what's called a watering hole attack that was in play. And so in a watering hole attack, you basically have a bunch of different websites that all have references to a website that serves up exploits to the victims. So the idea is, you know, imagine the African savanna and the attacker is just waiting for the animals to congregate at the watering hole. A nasty crocodile, you know, hiding under the water surface waiting to prey on them. So anyways, exploit server one would feed appropriate exploits for, you know, different user agent strings received by different web browsers. So if you're running iOS with Safari, it would feed you one exploit. If you're running Windows with Chrome, it would feed you another exploit. At some point, it started serving up Android exploits with a different Chrome exploit, and there was a different server that would actually serve that same Chrome vulnerability from up here to Android users as well. So the point is, in this case, we're going to be looking at the Safari remote code execution vulnerability, and the full exploit chain that this was a part of would have been a multi-exploit thing where first they get code execution in Safari, then they use that code execution to perform a information leak on the kernel, and then now that they have successfully defeated the address-based layout randomization mitigation, then they will achieve kernel privilege escalation and gain code execution there. So that's, you know, again, typical of modern exploit chains. So what was the actual Safari vulnerability? Well, macOS and iOS both use this lib type one scalar, dilib, which is a dynamic library, to process Adobe type one postscript fonts received via web pages. And, you know, if you look at other examples on uh, this class, you'll see that, you know, fonts are just another type of juicy acid content, just like, you know, images and, and other complex data formats. So type one fonts have this built-in thing called call other subroutine command. And it takes a general form of some number of arguments, so n arguments, and then an n telling you know, the system how many arguments that were actually processed. Then the other subroutine number, which is an index of a call to a custom uh, font defined postscript procedure and then call other substring, which is just the actual, actual literal string. So in the researchers write up for this vulnerability, for this zero day vulnerability that was exploiting people, this is all they gave us for pseudocode. So that's why I'm not gonna have you do find the flaw because it's a little bit too sparse and a little too little of context for you to reasonably find it. But the idea is that, you know, you've got those N uh, operands to the function that's being called. They're going to be placed on the stack somewhere. And then, you know, it pops off the end and says, okay, how many arguments does it have? N is four. It's attacker controlled. Then it does op sp, which here I'm showing pointing here, but again, there wasn't really enough context and I didn't care enough to go through the old versions of code into a decompiler to understand it fully. So I'm going to be making an assumption in this stack diagram, which may or may not be true. And, you know, someone else can point me at a reference that, you know, proves or disproves me. But I'm going to be assuming that notionally these arguments to this function get, you know, placed on the stack at index 0, 1, 2, 3, as opposed to 63, 62, 61, et cetera. But either way, no matter where they're placed, the vulnerability itself is going to be the same. Because we've got this op sp pointing here at the last argument, and it's going to do a minus equals n. So however many arguments there were, four in this case. So minus equals n, it's going to go ahead and move it down. So now the pointer is pointing here at the first one. And it's going to say if op sp is less than the address of the zeroth entry, then it's an error. So the address of the zeroth entry is obviously you know, not attacker controlled. And the op sp is attacker controlled in the sense that you know, they got to choose the end, so they get to choose how far down it goes. But the whole point of this sanity check is to bounds check it and say, okay, we don't want to let the attacker go down past the bounds of this particular array. So that is all good. What is not good is that they're missing the sanity check for going up past the other end of the array. So what if instead n was negative 5.1.12? Oh, there's a signed integer being used there instead of unsigned. That's not good. Well, what is op sp minus negative 5.1.12? Well, it's plus 5.1.12. So what if they go up, up, up? 
Then we've got this erroneous sanity check, which was trying to check to make sure it didn't go below, but didn't ac account for the idea that it could go above. And so this sanity check is going to say, yeah, looks good to me. But of course, that is not good. So it's up here now, it's out of bounds. It's perhaps pointing at a saved return address on the stack. And what can attacker do with that? Well, the uh, Google researchers provide an example proof of concept. And so concretely in this proof of concept, this uh, negative 120, uh, negative 1024 is the N. The 100 is just the other substring number. So it's indicating, you know, a particular uh, sub, uh, subroutine. Sorry, I said substring, subroutine, indicating a particular subroutine to call. Call other is just the literal uh, thing to say call some other function. And then there are these other options that can be passed on the same one. And so in this case, just a simple, simple trivial thing says that wherever this thing went, which you know now we know was 1024 above the uh, end of the buffer, or sorry, the start of the buffer, the zeroth entry of the buffer, this is going to go ahead and perform a not operation on the memory that is pointed there. So it's going to flip all the bits. Now this is of course just a trivial crashing proof of concept, but uh, the idea is that an attacker could you know then subsequently make manipulations to memory that are to their advantage. And then interestingly, this you know set current point will just go ahead and move the stack pointer back down to point at that zeroth entry. So effectively, each of these is just saying, I'm gonna move a thousand up and then I'm gonna flip the bits. Then it resets it back down. Then it's gonna move 2000 up, then it's gonna flip some bits, then it's gonna move back down. So again, this is just kind of a trivial crushing proof of concept to get you off the end of the stack. Do this over and over again until it ultimately crashes. So what was the fix for this? We don't know, proprietary code, and there's no researchers that you know I've seen yet that have provided a patch analysis. So of course, again, you can go ahead and let me know, or you know, for bonus and extra credits, you can go do the patch analysis and find out what the fix was.